Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to, I believe it is the finals or semifinals of tonight's Triton Cup. It is I, Mad Gamer the Second. I am joined by the lovely Chili Boy. How are you doing today, my friend? Hey, I'm doing very good. Thank you, I'm Mad. Happy, happy to be here with you. And yet we are going to be going into winners' finals, Potashe versus Hell's Paradise. But um, it has not been an easy journey for either of these two teams um the competition i think you know we were just talking about on the break weren't we how the competition just keeps developing in the community and everyone keeps getting better and uh, both these teams have come off very narrow three two wins to get to this point so really looking forward to seeing how this plays out how are you oh, doing i am doing just fantastic and as, as you said like neither of these none of these teams have had a clean break through the bracket it's just been fight all the way through and I imagine they're not done quite yet because we do have the finals here, but then whoever loses this one is going to drop down to losers and we have quite a few matches lined up for us down there as well. Yeah, we're not going to be sure on a commentary or content that is uh, going to be a lot of action and possibly a lot more upsets to come. That is the beauty of double elimination though, is uh, people get a chance to kind of run it back and have a second wind and um, we've seen some great examples of that in, in recent weeks and re in recent tournaments. I believe uh, Potache won paddling pool this week as well, so they're on an absolute tear right now. Oh, absolutely. It looks like they're at looking to add another one to their their uh, portfolio here going into this match. We saw a little bit of Hell's Paradise in a previous match going with the exact same combos before. Off the side, we have the Tentapril and the E-Leader. That's an interesting combo right there. Yeah, we've got a Tentapril and Mirror match, which I just, I don't think I've actually ever seen in Splatoon 3 yet. So I'm really interested in seeing how that interaction is between both tents. Hell's Paradise comp, very unconventional, but they have managed to make it work. Although Potage, very strong start, three down, beautiful snipe from Nakahara there. So Potage opening really strong. Oh yeah, Potage has an excellent opening there. We see Nadir trying to get up there and they have Aka already set up on the snipe. Like with how far they're pushed up, is it difficult for Hell's Paradise to get through? They're already two down once again. And I imagine that Inkjet is not going to have a safe landing. Yeah, and you do know... Oh my gosh, a nice pop on Anger there as well. Uh, yeah, Hell's Paradise seemingly having to pop all of their specials just to get out their spawn, really, which you really don't want to be in a position to have to do that. So they're building them up again now, using the Whale and trying to get in with the Inkbrush's brilliant movement speed, but... Nowhere looks safe right now. Potage have really solid map control and uh, yeah, just doing a really good job of keeping Hell's Paradise at bay. We do see a special online for the Tentapril as well as the Inja in the backside. The double Zuka able to take down two members, but they're down to six points remaining. They'll have to cap both of those zones to be able to stay in this fight and add on a penalty. And it looks like they're able to do just that with two members still down for Potage. So they have a good uh, deal of room to work with now. Yeah, that is a beautiful cap there. 72, very, very harsh penalty that Potage are going to have to shrug, up, uh, shrug off. Uh, got the Tacticaler out there now, so a lot of offensive momentum building for Hell's Paradise. Good awareness on the Inkjet earlier as well, as uh, the Tenter Brother was ready to catch the jump, and they knew that and managed to pick them off, which allowed them to secure the zone. So, yeah, with, with teams of this caliber, it's never going to be a straight blowout. Oh, absolutely. And Hell's Paradise is doing an excellent job of holding on to the zone for the time being. We did see the crab game pods, but didn't really get any picks off of that. So mm. now Hell's Paradise is responding with their own set of specials here. The Zuka coming out trying to find something, but unfortunately two of their mates do go down. That tr uh, The Rapid and the End Zap. The End Zap being one of their main painters right now. So they have one of the zones capped for a protege, and it looks like they're going to be looking to get that second one as well. Yeah, I thought it was a bit of a risky Zuka from Manga there, but it managed to delay long enough that uh, Potage have not managed to get a penalty. So Hell's Paradise, two players advantage at the moment, no penalty, chipping that timer down. Potage really struggling with the reclaim, so despite the rough start from Hell's Paradise, momentum in their favor now. Tactical are on board again, going to be even harder for Potage to get the retake because they cannot afford any trades. Does look like the Duelies have a crab tank, but they're going to have to pop it soon if they want to get this zone. Oh, this brother here wrecking havoc, just absolutely poking the heck out of them. We did see two nice picks with the bombs, and they are just one point away from gaining the lead. That jump is not going to be going anywhere, and I believe that's going to be KO for Hell's Paradise. Blimey, what a reversal, because it was a suffocating start from Potage, not only getting the cap so quickly, but forcing Hell's Paradise to use so many coordinated specials just to attempt to even get back into threatening the zone never mind uh, taking it back but once they got that momentum 
um, they didn't let up at any point. It was it might have been a bit of uh, bad luck with Potage as well in the sense that they did get a couple of picks on a couple of occasions and appeared to have the numbers advantage to retake and then just a really good response from uh, the rest of the Hell's Paradise players that were up to just stall the zone long enough to prevent themselves getting a penalty and dragging that game out. So, yeah, very interesting game one. I would not feel comfortable betting for or against either team right now and the beauty of uh, being in the winners final side is it's just pure counter picks from here so we're going to be seeing both these teams play to their strengths oh absolutely like both of these teams are on par with where they have ended up in this tournament so far and we did see Potage had a nice opening just as you said they just locked out hell's paradise for so long like they were, we saw they were how aggressive they were with two members already just on their snipe on their plat just pushed up to their spawn but hell's paradise took their uh, approach slow, they were weathered the storm and were able to just slowly make their back way back into zone before it was too late. And we saw like the brush and I think it was the uh, Tanta just coming from the left side able to just pincher them and able to take the zone back in time. Yeah, and I think um, t towards the end there, the, the uh, Splat Doolies was was holding their crab tank possibly just waiting for the right opportunity to go for a coordinated assault with the team but just in the end just had had to click the trigger, had to do everything they can to stall the timer just because Hell's Paradise were just so consistently holding control of mid. Not easy to do that on a map like this when you've got two zones that you have to kind of occupy, but um, despite the quite unconventional composition and like you say, quite a lot of pressure on the end zap in that comp to hold the painting, they had really, really good map control when they got control... Uh, when they managed to actually gain um, an advantage state. So, be very interested to see where Potager go to counter pick here. Um, you know, they're, they're very experienced in tournaments like this. They will just shrug off that like game one. But um, when you get to teams of this caliber, there's not really ever a good counter pick. There's just places people feel more comfortable. So, yeah, it looks like they're um, taking the time to think about it. They're possibly looking at Hell's Paradise uh, and their kind of unconventional comp as well and thinking where they can shut them down. And is that really mince meat uh, metalworks that we're going to? <laughs> Oh my, yeah, that is indeed Mince Me. That is the last stage I would expect to be picked in any tournament for any mode whatsoever. Wow. I, I was just going to say, like, I'm. If you're a Tenta, if you're going to be using Tenta, bro, I feel like you are dedicated to the weapon. It's not really a, a niche pick for a certain map mode, so I feel like they are going to be picking to cater to that Tenta, bro. But I, I'm honestly not sure with Mince Meat. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm no Tentabella uh, expert, but I, I'm, I can, I can only really see them holding the kind of choke point in the middle on, on the low. I can't really see where else you can block off very well with, with, with the brother here. I guess they're thinking as well. It does shut down the ink brush because their ink brush play is pretty dedicated and does normally mean that an ink brush is going to struggle a lot here. Plus, they have Nakahara, mm -hmm. who's an extremely strong gear eater. So we'll see if Hell's Paradise go for range. They have opted for a Rapid Blaster Deco, so they have got a bit of range in their kit, but I still think Nakahara, if, if they're allowed to set up uncontested, Potage are going to have an advantage here with that comp. Oh, and then uh, Potage is also going for the Double Crab. We got a Vanilla Splash and a Vanilla Dooleys, which are both exceptionally strong for a Mint Me. As you set them both, either of them up on the trucks alongside of that E-Leader, and you just got a lot of long-range pressure going up against Hell's Paradise. Yeah, and of course, that's why uh, Mincemeat does get the grumbles about the map design, because long-range weapons are king here. But that being said, Hell's Paradise absolutely say no to that. Noxus on the Rapid doing an incredible job, and then on an absolute tear with the Inkjet. So, Hell's Paradise with momentum, with a three-player advantage, able to get in very, very deep. And this is what Potager did not want with the composition. So, this is going to be challenging to shut down for them, I think. And Hell's Paradise are going to get a meaty lead here. Oh, absolutely. Like, wh when you're in a stalemate just contesting for the middle area, you know, you are you can kind of play to your strengths with long range, but once the enemy team gets up into your plat like that, it's just like the whole game changes. You gotta really be able to force them out before you can really do anything. Yeah, and they're really struggling with that. I mean, Noctis really the only player with the range to contest most of this comp, but managing to do so absolutely beautifully. We are going to see a coordinated assault now between the Crab and the Zooka, managing to get a couple of picks, but the Brush Ooh. here... Managing to stall enough, but not quite. They need to get a penalty now. And it looks like Hell's Paradise have more players in the zone. And they are going to shut the game down. So, 
Poetier almost with a reclaim there, but amazing map awareness by Hell's Paradise. And that was almost a total opposite of how I expected that game to play out, to be honest. Oh, same here. Like, that was such a clutch play by the brush. Like, not only did they take down two members of Protégé, but they, they just, the distraction they were able to do, that Crab had to ball up. They weren't able to put any more pressure on the zone. So the last two members that were coming back from the spawn were able to just get there in time to defend the zone. Like, both the tent and the in-dap were able to just clutch it out for the last couple of seconds. Yeah, that is going to... Um really really sting for Potage because I, I think they had a kind of compositional advantage and unfortunately just got so overwhelmed by that strong start that um, like you say the the downside to their composition is is you know how do they get back in when those more close range aggressive weapons manage to get um, set up and manage to get the the map to have much more free movement um, mm -hmm. it, it shows it can be done Elia is not mandatory to win on mincemeat zones contrary to a uh, popular belief in Twitter at times, but um, yeah, a very, very nice coordinated sort by Hell's Paradise, and the ink brush to just be sharking there and to go for that really cheeky double that just stalled out um, them long enough to, to be able to, to hold that zone was, uh, yeah, a very worthwhile sacrifice on their part, so lots of pressure on Protégé now, they're a 2-0 down, they need to reverse sweep, and uh, against Hell's Paradise, that is not going to be an easy ask. Yeah, just the fact that Hell's Paradise took the first match already left them at a disadvantage because of the counterpick system, but the fact they already beat their counterpick means that even if Protégé wins this next match, that's going to leave Hell's Paradise with their own counterpick, and we if you got your counterpick, that usually leads you in a more favorable position, to, unless you get exceptionally lucky. Oh, completely, yeah, it's... Uh... That it means that they get to completely dictate the pace of those last two games. They're going to have that kind of psychological advantage going into this if they can afford to drop a game. So Protégé have that kind of anxiety now that they can't really afford to mess up. So all of that massively feeds into kind of competitive play and that decision making. And you have to make so many split second decisions in a game like Splatoon that all of that can add up to you know, make a massive difference if the skill is otherwise pretty even across both teams, which I, you know, think it is here. Um, Brian Water is the counter pick. I, I would expect to see the, the crabs in action again here because they're just so strong for, uh, you know, quite safely reclaiming the zone from the ramp. But, um, I, you know, Hell's Paradise keeps surprising me. They just keep refusing to change their comp and it works anyway. So what do I know at this point? <laughs> Oh, indeed. Like, I, I would expect them, like, they're definitely catering to that E-Leader crab combo, but as you said, just Hell's Predice has been able to surprise us. You know, we see the brush just be able to poke from a distance, but then move in as soon as you're turning your back to them. It's like, that's not what you want to do, and I imagine as soon as the crabs are going to be popped, that brush is going to be going up that ramp, just wrecking havoc for them. Yeah, and oh gosh, I, I, I think brush amazes me as a weapon because everything about it to me suggests it should really struggle and have a lot of bad matchups, but people just know how to move about with that thing and it not necessarily always getting picks, but causing a constant distraction. And that is such an underrated um, skill because if you're demanding you know, the enemy's attention and, and taking them away from the objective, the rest of your team can capitalize on that, and Zay is someone who knows how to create those opportunities for their teammates so incredibly well. So we'll see what they do here. Potage immediately capping, not wasting any time. The Jets are coming out there. I feel a bit of aggression from them, actually. They're not happy they lost that last game, and they're going full frontal assault immediately. But uh, that Hell's Paradise will likely shrug that off, although they have managed to get two picks. Not a bad start. Yeah, Pro Potage is not happy at all, and I'm... Curious, I like the the pick for the Anarchy Nova. Like they're definitely going for that inkjet uh, counter right there. Like they do have the double crab still, but we saw the the inkjet from Hell's Paradise just wrecking havoc on them. So they're trying to mm. throw in a bit of their own. But it looks like Hell's Paradise, like they were able to just come back from that aggression once their specials ran out for Poche, and they're able to get the uh, the lead back like almost immediately. Yeah, I think the tent for Hell's Paradise was causing a lot of pressure on Potage's ramp, but they have shut that down. They have got a reclaim, so this is going to be much more back and forth. You do tend to see that with Brian Water, but I totally agree with you about the Anar uh, Anarchy pick. It's, um, you know, ballpoint as an overall weapon is, is stronger and more flexible, but if you are going for that dedicated special spam, and also for good paint control, because that's something the Anar Anarchy does well. It paints actually incredibly well with its spread. Um, mm -hmm. that, that is... That is 
that is uh, covering a hole in Potager's comp that is working really lovely because you've got all the offensive firepower there already with the splash and the, the splat duelies so they can afford to go more support and more focused on that kind of map control. It's worked out really well for them so far. Um, we've got a bit of a stalemate going on right now, but it doesn't feel like Potage are losing control. It looks like they're uh, you know just holding off Hell's Paradise enough to extend this lead. Right, and then we do see two members of Hell's Paradise go down, but with the special combo right there, they flip the ties just in a split second. That's still a good deal of lead that Protégé has, so they have time to bring this back. I think, as you said, like having the Anarchy for the paint alongside the e as well, like the e just main uh, goal is just to go for those splats there. And with uh, uh, this map, Brian Waters, just, you just got a lot of open area for that e to make some moves, but... Boja is so close to getting that zone cap, and Hell's Paradise is just fighting for it. Yeah, and I'm really impressed with the uh, Nova there, actually. The, the map awareness to... Um, it knew exactly where two players on Hell's Paradise were sharking, so went for unprovoked assaults with the uh, Inkjet in a way that allowed that pick and that trade, which was quite crucial in that recap. So the pick looks like it's working out for them really, really well. Uh, mines can be really annoying on the zone in mid as well, so we'll see if they come into play. But Hell's Paradise got the recap pretty quick under the circumstances, but they are now two down. They've overextended a little bit there. Nakahara getting a nice pick. And Potage looking much stronger here than they have the last two games. Yes, they, they're holding on to the lead for all it's worth. Like, we're down to th two minutes of this match left, and so far, Health Credits has yet to take the lead back after that initial push. They've gotten several caps so far, and so they're definitely able to take the zone back, but they just haven't been able to have the same power that they've shown in the last two matches. Now, something I wanted to bring up was, like, having that end zap for, on Hell's Paradise means that they can have a quick turnaround with that cooler, both for when they're just trying to be aggressive or if they just get shut down with a wipe or something. But already Protégé is just, uh, just contesting that zone constantly, and that is the main uh, feature of Brian that it's so easy to contest that zone. Yeah, I, I mean, you're totally right in how Hell's Paradise play. They um, they have the aggressive playstyle to take advantage of the tactical beautifully, and look at how it's paid off for them here. Like, even though Protégé were doing such a good job of holding, when Hell's Paradise get that momentum and get those coolers up, it is just a suffocating amount of offensive pressure. And just like that, after... So many close um, sets this evening. A, an absolute blowout by Hell's Paradise overall. A 3-0 against Potage, who are probably the strongest competition as far as like seeding would suggest. Um, they're going to be really, really happy with themselves. Hell's Paradise off that performance. Very, very appropriate fist bump coming in there. Indeed, and like that—that that is interesting. Like getting a 3-0 in finals of all things. Like you would expect that maybe in the earlier rounds, but. You know, both of these teams have fought so many teams to get here, and then just Hell's Paradise coming out on top with a 3-0, just excellent, very well played, but that is not the end of uh, Protégé so far. Like, we still have a loser's bracket to uh, give them the redemption that they looking for. <laughs> Oh, I do love a good loser's run at Redemption arc, and I think, yeah, the beauty of Double Limb as well is uh, people get to feel how each other are playing and adapt to that if there's a rerun. So, Protégé down, absolutely not out by any stretch of the imagination, and there is a bunch of very scary talent still in this tournament. We still have Cat Gang in it, we still have Bet in it, No Way, who are known for their very um, impressive upsets, Rugrats, who had an amazing showing earlier, and... Uh, just barely lost to Potage to get knocked into losers. There is so much talent still in this tournament, so um, I believe we're going to be taking a short break, and then we'll be right back at you with the um, with with some very engaging losers matches to see who will be taking on Hell's Paradise in the Grand Finals rerun. Indeed. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> 